Wednesday, May 5th, 15th in the MLB. Our three favorite picks are on the way. I'm Austin, joined by Logan. Let's recap yesterday, a weird two and three day, and I'll talk about all of our five plays that went down. Now, the first one that we lost, the Mets minus one and a half, a weird one that rolled over into yes, the, into the next day. Can't do much about that. Although our winners, Tigers plus one and a half, great call, Logan. Pirates team total over three and a half. Those cash then. If you went to my Phillies and Rockies over, a shout out to the Phillies for going 0 for 14 with runners in scoring position. And then our no one first inning was two outs away. And then Strongman just came in and had a terrible outing. But either way, a bounce back day is in store. You guys see our record at the bottom of the screen. We've had a lot more good days than bad days, but we're going to lose some money here and there. Hopefully today is a very, very good day. Now, some good positive news. Let's talk about it. Parlay of the day is back. It is top link in the description. I swear, last week, well, our parlays were a little bit cold, but we lost, I swear, every single one of them by one leg. I think we went one and four last week. I was always, I promote, you know, only putting like a quarter unit on a parlay. Hitting the MLB parlay is pretty difficult. But if you are new, hit that subscribe button. Logan, it's going to be a good day. What's your first pick for the people? Yeah, let's get after it this week. I'm going to a money line in my first pick, and I'm taking the Cardinals on the money line, plus 100 odds on bet 365 is currently your best value in this one. Now, again, I'm going to do some line reading as I always do. The 23 and 17 Milwaukee Brewers are in a pick 'em with the 16 and 25 Cardinals, right? Both teams are coming off a hot weekend, right? They both swept three three to nothing in their series wins over the weekend. And I really do like the way the Cardinals offense is finally starting to come around. I watched a little bit of Sunday Night Baseball, and hopefully they carry that momentum over today. Now, there's always this narrative going around, and it kind of annoys me. Everyone's like, a team playing on Sunday Night Baseball is going to suck the next day, you know, on Monday having to travel and everything. No, <laughs> the, 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 I, the numbers don't support that, so just stop. But Jack Flaherty starts for the Cardinals today. 6.18 ERA, 1.73 whip on the season. No, he's not my favorite pitcher to back. Flaherty is a little bit suspect. I won't lie to you there. But the last time he faced Milwaukee in April, five innings pitched, two earned runs. St. Louis did lose that game four to nothing. Now, if they, they don't bring the bats today, if they don't give Flaherty some run support, he's going to make mistakes, and we will lose this one. There's no doubt about that. Well, Milwaukee, 15th in batting average, 23rd in OPS on the road. They are not an offense that necessarily strikes fear into my into my heart, right? With a pitcher like Flaherty, walks and getting hard hit are the concerns for a guy like that. You know, the walks I can't control. I truly can't. If he wants to walk five batters today, it's gonna look it's gonna look a little bit dicey. But Milwaukee is 22nd in hard hit percentage. So that definitely is on our side. Milwaukee's not necessarily getting the hard contact extra base hits. Uh, as as much as most teams are. And and I really do think Flaherty can put up a decent enough showing. I'm not asking him to go pit, pitch a perfect outing, right? But I am relying on the St. Louis Bats to get to Freddie Peralta, right? Peralta starts for the Brewers, 3.32 ERA, 1.2 whip. Last time Peralta faced the Cardinals in April, six innings pitch, one earned run. Milwaukee won that game 6-1. to one. Again, Cardinals offense, just a no-show in that one. To me, this is a different version of the St. Louis Cardinals, though, right? This is more of the team that everyone sort of expected. The narrative is there that they were been so disappointing this year. Over their last three games, St. Louis is hitting 288. I like that, right? I like seeing a batting average hovering around 300, finally showing what you're capable of doing when you can get a little bit hot. St. Louis is a great team at home, right, offensively. Fifth in batting average, seventh in OPS. Cardinals need to bring the bats today against Freddie Peralta because he is a strikeout specialist, but I'm telling you right now, because he is a strikeout specialist, he will throw a lot of pitches in the zone. If, you know, these St. Louis hitters are on, they can certainly get to him. And I like their splits versus Peralta, right? Goldschmidt and Arenado, both seven for 19 with two and three home runs, respectively. You got Contreras and, and DeYoung also with home runs against them. DeYoung homered last night. At the end of the day, I really do think, you know, they can get to Freddie Peralta, get some hits and runs up on him. And I and St. Louis, 13th in bullpen ERA, Milwaukee, 6th in bullpen ERA telling you right now i still do trust the cardinals bullpen more than the brewers bullpen it's just one of those if you watch baseball enough you have certain teams that you see the the bullpen arms come in and you're like oh no the, milwaukee to me is one of those teams if i'm ever back in the brewers i'm like uh-oh so I'm, I'm just telling you right now i do like a few signs pointing to the cardinals in this one coming back to home i think they get this done uh, against their division rival but austin what do you got for us today uh, before I dive into my favorite pick, I do want to give out two leans that are absolutely going to hit. The first one will be the Reds and Rockies over. Yeah, that game's going to go for like 15 runs since I took the over yesterday, didn't get it done, and then it hits over the next day. And also the Phillies, shout out them. They're probably going to score eight runs today because they went 0 for 14 with runners in scoring position yesterday when I had the over in their game. But while that's not going to be either of my plays, I'm going to go to a team total in the Cubs and Astros game. I'm going to be targeting the Cubs, the team total over three runs. It's currently minus 118 on Caesars. Now, there are going to be a 
couple bucks at three and a half, and you can take it there. I'd probably limit down to one. I would not put one unit at three and a half. Obviously, there's a chance the Cubs end with three runs today, and we push and get our money back, whereas the three and a half betters are not going to get their money in case it does go to three. So I'd probably play that right around a half a unit, maybe 0.75. But let's talk about why I like the Cubs today, who are on the road taking on the Astros. Now, the Cubs are coming off two embarrassing games. I mean, they lost 11 to one. On Saturday, followed up 16-3 to on Sunday to the Twins, and it's the beginning of a new series. So hopefully they brush that off and say, you know what, guys, we got to bounce back. we got to manufacture some runs, steal some bases, and actually do something against this team uh, in the Astros, the defending champs. Now, you look at Fran Valdez, he's going to start for the Astros, and I'm not going to come in here and say Valdez has given up six earned runs today. Now, that's probably not going to happen, but Valdez has been great this year. 2.38 ERA and a 1.04 whip. This is a guy is out perhaps in the 18 and a half. This is a guy that normally... Goes pretty far into games, but Valdez also coming off a terrific start. Eight innings pitched, one earned runs, 12 Ks versus the uh, Los Angeles Angels. So can he duplicate that? We always talk about you got to be a day before or a start before they get rocked. And I'm not saying Valdez comes in here and gives up, you know, five earned runs. But we're not asking him to give up five and runs. Heck, even three, which he's certainly capable of doing, will push this team total. And then we're just asking for maybe a run against the bullpen, which is possible because we are guaranteed that the Cubs do bat nine innings here today. And look, I look at this Cubs plus one and a half was going to be my pick, but I don't want to lay juice on a plus one and a half. That's like minus 135 on some books. But I still think that Valdez can give up some runs. I mean, he's given up, despite you know his, his great numbers, two plus earned runs and five of his last seven starts. He's given up three or more in runs in a couple of those starts. And the Astros actually have not won back-to-back Valdez starts all year long. I think he's made eight starts. He's normally been a, a roller coaster in terms of the Astros winning. It's been win, loss, win, loss. They won his last start. And I'm not saying the Cubs come out here and win this game, but I think if they do have a chance at winning, they got to at least give us three runs of run support. Worst case scenario, Cubs win like two to one. That would really make me really sad. But Valdez, a lefty. Cubs have hit lefties pretty well this year. Seventh in batting average, fifth in OPS versus lefties. And Valdez also been getting hit, hit pretty hard. He does not give up a lot of home runs, but fifth in average exit velocity, fifth percentile in average exit velocity, and 16th in hard hit percentage. So look at the guys getting hard hits against them. They're not necessarily home runs because Valdez normally keeps your launch angle pretty low, guy that normally induces a lot of ground ball outs. But they are if they are getting into the gaps, we could see a lot of doubles here potentially, getting guys in a scoring position, which is all we can ask for. When we're taking an over like this, we're just asking for the chances. Yesterday, I know the Phillies and Rockies game didn't even look close. They ended up with four total runs. We had plenty of chances to put up some runs there today. And maybe if you get those hits with runners in scoring position, they could, you know, cannonball into more or snowball into more and more higher scoring innings. And we're not asking for, you know, a three-run inning from the Cubs today, but I certainly think they're a capable enough offense to get it done. And then when you get out of Valdez, who probably doesn't pitch nine innings, if he does, we probably lose here. But Astros bullpen, I'm not going to poke holes here. It's a very solid bullpen, 3.33 ERA, fifth best, 1.18 whip, which is the fourth best in the majors. No MLB bullpen is perfect. We saw Logan talk about, you know, the Mariners bullpen yesterday with the, their first in bullpen ERA. They ended up giving up some runs to the Tigers who ended up winning that game outright, reverse run lining them. So no bullpen is, is completely perfect. There's going to be run opportunities in this game. I like the fact this is sitting at three. There's a good chance that we get a push here, but hopefully they can get us four or more runs against Valdez. We can get a no sweat bet though. So that's my favorite bet. Cubs team total over three. Going to keep it simple. I think the Cubs have a good chance of getting that done. But Logan, I believe you know what time it is. Let's get out the music. Let's get out the flags. And uh, we I have a little bit of a uh, soliloquy or a rant to go on. But let's at least fly the flags real quick. And we'll uh, we'll get into this in a second. Now, Logan, I know you see it, but I swear the amount of hate we get on the no run first innings is, is, is crazy. Now, I want to pull up, you know, our record on the season. Because I swear, based on the comment section, you think we are 0-40 on no run first innings. Now, sure, look, the record 2020 minus 2.85 units. I know it's not a great start to the year. It's been a lot of pitch clock adjustments for a lot of different guys. But at the end of the day, I mean, we're 20 and 20. I mean, we're down a couple units. Sure, that's not ideal. Last year, we were up 25 units. But we're not as bad as I swear the comments think we are. Look, we can only do so much. We can't go out there and pitch for the guys. So I think we're going to turn it around. Eventually, I think what happens is we lose a couple in a row. People lose faith. They stop tailing. We win three in a row. Then they're back to tailing. We lose. Look, it's a luck-based bet. If you want to tell any of our picks, these are arguably the least research because there's not so much research we can do. I mean, an error would cost us uh, some random things. Random things happen every single day in the MLB. So, like, we're going to try to dial these on in. And I promise you our record's probably going to be a lot better than 2020 by the end of the year. But 
And wait, we can't control exactly what goes down. But today, I like the one we got cooked up for the people. And let's talk about it. Because going to the Mariners and Red Sox game and taking the no on first inning. Currently, plus 100 on Caesars. Getting a little bit of plus money here. Now, why do we like this one? Because this uh, no one wants to take Red Sox nerfies in Fenway Park. But I think these offenses are coming due to some, due to some regression. Now, let's talk about Tanner Houck. He's going to start for the Red Sox. And He's not the best pitcher, you know, in the world. Very far from that. But he is 5-2 and two on no on first innings. And the Mariners are 24th in first inning runs. We saw them, you know, lose to the Tigers outright yesterday. We've seen this offense and the Mariners sometimes struggle. And I think how can go out there and do his thing. Sometimes he's a harder pitcher to see, you know, their first time through the order. You normally see people put up runs on him, you know, the second, third time through the order. So how can do his thing. He can get us three outs. We've seen much worse pitchers get three outs. So I'm confident he gets us those first three outs. Who's on the other side, though, Logan? Yeah, I believe in George Kirby to get us those last three outs that we need to cash this nerfy. George Kirby, good on no run first inning, six and one on nerfies this year, only allowing one yes run first inning. Hopefully, he can do that for us today. Uh, once again, the Red Sox, 12th in first inning runs. They're sort of an annoying offense in the first inning, but you know, watching what I watched yesterday with some Sunday night baseball, again, I think both of these offenses are kind of on the decline. I think they both reached their peaks, and then now they're starting to come down a little bit. The over-under is set high to nine and a half just because it is Fenway. But look, do a little bit of line reading in this one, right? Like the value you're getting at and with a high over-under, I just think the books are like, meh, maybe the, the runs come later in the bullpen halves and not in the first inning. Nerfy Nation, I think we could stand a really good chance of cash in this one. And as Austin mentioned, I, I kind of want to touch in on that too. For all the people saying, stop doing no run first inning bets, stop doing nerfies, convert to your fees. First of all, we're not doing yes run first innings. I've tried it before. It just doesn't work. Second of all, if you don't want to, to bet the nerfy or if you don't believe in the nerfy, don't bet it, right? We're not forcing you gun to your head to bet this no run first inning. It's tail at your own risk. It's our least researched bet, but it's a fun bet we, we really do want to make because the baseball season way too damn long uh, to not have a little bit of fun. So this is our fun bet that we do make day by day. Tail it if you want. But I think we're going to cash the flag. Fly these flags today, Austin. Oh, these, fla these flags are flying. But those are our three favorite picks of the day. You see them scrolling down at the bottom. If you want some more picks with some alt run lines and stuff like that, go check out the parlay of the day. It's the top link in the description. Feeling a good damn feeling a 3 0 sweep. I'm feeling a parlay cash, and uh, we're going to have a good day. So appreciate you guys as always. Austin Logan signing out. We'll see you guys back again tomorrow. Same time, same place. See you guys then. Peace.